why the accident happened at the Fukushima Daiichi in the first place. The question still lingers on. Then, after you have learned why, then how can we improve the safety situation of the nuclear power generators in Japan so that we can avoid uh, any other, any future accident repetition? Then the current uh, uh, crisis question in Japan is, as of today, there's only one nuclear power reactor in Japan in operation out of 50 reactors. They are having difficulty restarting the reactors because the people are just afraid to give permission or consent to start uh, uh, power generators in Japan. What can we do? That's another question. But all through these questions, I sensed sort of lack of leadership in Japan, or I would say lack of proper leadership, both at political level and in the nuclear community in Japan, so to speak. Look at the, all the debates in Japan, nuclear debates. It's almost anonymous. There's no central strong figure in Japan who argues this is the future of Japanese nuclear industry or this is the way it should be. It's almost conducted anonymously, uh, the balls flying from this direction, the other direction, so and so. So I think we need to have a, a truly leadership crisis in Japan on the nuclear issues. So it really begs that question why uh, that PEPCO uh, was uh, so unprepared. And we uh, uh, concluded that uh, it was uh, not so much as uh, that uh, <coughs> managerial uh, or operational, uh, but as uh, perhaps uh, reflecting that more deeper uh, social and historical uh, background. Uh, we had uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, a nuclear bomb and anti-nuclear sentiments uh, remain to be very much strong, and since, uh, particularly since 1970s, uh, after the first oil crisis, uh, Japan, uh, you know, depending almost 99% of oil imported uh, from the uh, Middle Eastern countries, uh, felt compelled uh, to uh, develop that nuclear uh, plants uh, for uh, providing that uh, energy security. Uh, yet uh, the people still remain to be very much anti-nuclear, uh, nuclear allergy was, was so strong. So uh, the companies, uh, operators, as well as the regulators really felt obliged uh, to argue that the nuclear safety is absolutely, absolutely safe, uh, absolutely uh, guaranteed. Even after the Fukushima accident, nuclear power is regarded by the world as a whole, as a whole, as highly reliable in terms of energy security, as exceptionally economical, and as a source of clean energy, green energy, and uh, inclination to maintain and expand nuclear solar, uh, energy use remains intact, although tempered by consideration for safety. So uh, uh, nuclear renaissance uh, might not be uh, 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 so uh, uh, particularly after Chernobyl, but still, as a whole, except uh, perhaps uh, Germany, uh, Italy, Switzerland, and Japan, other uh, world as a whole, uh, well, uh, pro uh, still uh, looks at nuclear energy uh, very proactively. Another thing, though, if I can, kind of another problem with, with, with Prime Minister Khan is that he didn't, he, he had this perception that, uh, you know, like, like a real man didn't, you know, wasn't a man of words, he was a man of action. And if he sort of rolled up his sleeves and, got to work and tried to fix, you know, tried to get the situation of Fukushima under control, that the people of Japan would fall behind him and that he would, people would understand what he was doing. And I think he, he, he missed 
one of the really essential facts of politics, which is that politics is drama, right? Politics is performance. And he never kind of went out there and told people what he was doing. He never really explained himself. He never really articulated a vision or a direction or anything. I think he was oddly silent, you know, even months after the disaster. He really was a non-entity in many ways throughout the disaster. I mean, I'm reminded of uh, 9-11 and how President Bush disappeared for several days. You know, Khan did the same kind of thing. He just was, he was just a non-presence. He wasn't there. I mean, he was there in, the, in his office, but he wasn't talking to the people. He wasn't trying to reassure people, give people a, a vision or a direction. And I think this had enormous consequences because I think it fed the huge distrust that people in Japan now feel, feel towards their leaders because I, and there's just a sense that leadership in Japan failed, that, that the country was left rudderless and directionless, and that uh, I think Khan fed this perception just by his simple failure to get out in front of a microphone and tell people what he was thinking and to try to give some direction and to try to reassure the public at a very dark time. Because of this accident, the nuclear industry or nuclear community is waking up. We realize that, well, accident to happen. Maybe our approach needs to be corrected. We've been saying, oh, nuclear power is safe, don't worry about it, nothing is going to happen. Well, Chernobyl, it's a Russian plan, Russians are horrible in engineering and so on. There is a shift, a paradigm shift in nuclear safety. We've been focusing on design basis extent. Now we're shifting our interest to beyond design basis. The, the station blackout is becoming part of the regulatory requirement according to NRC, and that is becoming, I think, that's sort of a norm in other countries as well.